Hi there, thanks for joining me this evening. We are going to talk about how to enter text into PE Design or Palette. I am currently using version 11, um, but the techniques are going to be the same pretty much no matter what version you're running. There are just some tweaks that happen as you go up in versions. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at the text features up here, which is the big A. When we click on that, we see the different options that we have available. The first one is going to be your basic text. The second is going to be for small texts. These would be things like recipes on a towel or a poem or maybe a Bible verse or something like that that needs to have much smaller letters to fill the space because there's a lot of words that are going to fill in that area. The next guy over here is going to be your monograms. And then last but not least, we have some kind of fancier pieces um, that have a little bit more going on. We're going to um, basically cover this basic text. So we're going to click that and we need to click anywhere on your hoop area. So just click right in there and you'll see that you have a cursor that shows up on the screen here. And then over here we have our text attributes and we have our white box with the blinking cursor there as well. So. Inside of here, we're going to write our word. Um, when we have all of those different options available, we can change different things about them. So we can change color, um, we can change some other things as well, but basically I want to, first of all, is to, for you guys to see this on the main um, hoop area. So we're just going to hit enter and it will show up and I can make some changes. So I have my basic corner, um, being able to give me all four sides of that changing. Alrighty. I also, of course, have my center, which can stretch it out, um, either right or left. Or I have up and down to make something much taller, if that's what I was looking for. So, all of these different things, pretty basic, right? But we've got these neat little guys here in the center. So, if I click on the one on the H, Everything that I'm doing now is just on that H. And I can rotate it, make it a little bit sillier looking kind of thing. Um, I can move the arrows so I can just change those sizes of just this guy here. So maybe I want my H to be much larger than the rest. And that is going to go um, in sizes both directions, angled and up and down. And then I have the ability to um, move just that H. So we've got spacing, size, and rotation for just a single letter. We also have my favorite button over here is undo. And I can undo everything that I just did so that we can start back over from fresh. So if I grab hold and I try to move different pieces here, it's going to move just that letter that I have selected. So you can see it's very easy to select those different pieces there. If I have the entire piece selected, I will have my text tools up here that allow me to do lots of fun things. The first of which, of course, is to change the font itself. So I can change that. It's going to move pretty easily. You see it just changes that immediately. So here at the top of the list, we'll have whatever I used most recently. And then you can see it starts with the number one. As we scroll down, all of these with numbers are built in digitized fonts. Fonts are always going to stitch out the best if they were actually digitized to be a font rather than a true type or open type font that we downloaded from the internet that we want to be a font that has not actually been planned out in stitches for the best possibility. Now again, um, depending upon what version you're running, you may not have 120 built-in digitized fonts, um, but once I get out of those numbers, you'll see that there is a TT. And these are going to be all of the fonts that I have in my font folder. So in this case, my Windows font folder. And I can choose what that will be. And you can see that this was a bug's life up here. And now I have little um, butterfly bodies as my L's. Um, it just happens to be what's showing up in the letters that I've chosen here. I do have a single color. It's a light purple. Um, that is the satin stitch that are, are the base of this letter. Up above that, I do have a line option. So right now I'm selected on not sewn. If I click on that drop down. 
I can choose to have a zigzag outline or even a running stitch. There's many options. I prefer one of these two personally, but depending on how large your letter is, you certainly can make some different choices. A running stitch is really nice if we just want to give an edge so that you have that nice crisp look on um, any of your letters. The satin stitch is going to look a little bit different. That would be your zigzag here. And you can see that you have a little bit heavier outlook there. So a little bit different of what you're going to see. And of course, I can change the color right there as well. So I could make that a dark purple if I wanted. When I click off, you can see exactly what that would look like stitched. If I wanted to see a realistic view instead of a stitch view, I can click on view and click on realistic and that would show me what that would actually look like stitched out. So you can see the insides here are actually little bugs as well, which is kind of cute. I'm going to switch that back to stitch. I do recommend that you do most of your digitizing work on stitch because your screen will be able to refresh faster. If you have realistic or solid chosen, it's going to take your computer longer to produce the visual. So it's certainly going to be much easier if you have um, that on stitch. So we're going to come back to text. And I got there by clicking on the word itself, which gives me my black handle squares. And then I clicked on text. So I'm right back where I started. We do have some of different things that we can do. If we look over here on the right, again, we do have some color options, but you saw you can change that up at the top as well. Um, we do have an angle that we can change that to, which you can also adjust right here. So I can turn that on a complete angle and then everything is going to look a little bit different. You'll notice that the entire size has grown quite a bit. I'm gonna undo that so that we can um, continue to show you these other tools that are on here nice and easy. Character spacing is just what it sounds like. And I can actually increase the space in between each letter. And you'll see that it will automatically adjust um, as I have pushed that. I just have to wait just a sec and it will um, go ahead and make the adjustments to whatever. There is no um, button that you have to click for apply. Below here, I have different directions, and I can actually have that go vertically, which looks absolutely terrible in this instance, but sometimes it's exactly what you want, um, and we can adjust those as well. I have an alignment option, which I can have left centered, I'm sorry, left justified, centered, or right justified, and of course, I have line spacing. So let's get another line on there real quick. When I hit here, if I just hit the, the key enter on my keyboard, all that's going to happen is I'm going to go right back to the previous screen. So the kicker on here, the one key to remember is if you hold your control button down and then hit enter, it gives you a second line of text. So there we have hello there now. I've got two lines. When I hit enter without holding in the control, it will make that adjustment. So this is actually a pretty cute font. I haven't played with it a whole lot, but we have little bugs and wings and, and cute little guys floating around here. So very, very easy to add multi-line text. You just have to remember to hold that control key down as you're going to that next line. So um, I actually want to show you a couple other things. I'm going to get rid of my there. So we just have our original piece here. This last piece I want to show you on here is your transform. On transform, we have the ability to make lots of interesting shapes. So you can see that this has already altered itself based on clicking on this square. I can go the opposite direction. I can just do a basic curve. I can do a basic curve on the bottom. Uh, we can do all kinds of really fun things. Um, we can adjust, we can do little bits of waves, um, all kinds of really great stuff. And this is a phenomenal tool to be able to get that text looking exactly like you want it to be. So to recap, on our text tools, we have the ability to change our font type, which is right over here across the top. We do have the ability to change a set, uh, the size, excuse me, of your font. We have the ability to give it an outline, which is either um, the best cleanest look is going to be these two, but sometimes that's not what we're looking for. And we can actually go into a motif stitch or something like that. Now I'm gonna warn you ahead of time, this is gonna look really bad. But when I do that, you can see that my outline goes all weird. Um, and that is because I've chosen a motif stitch. 
Um, on my motif stitch, I can actually click on sewing attributes and I can change how big those little guys are right there. And I can also change the type of stitch that I have here. So under motifs, you can see we have literally oodles and oodles of options. Um, some are going to look better than others on different types of fonts. So you really have to play um, and don't be afraid to choose different pieces because all we have to do if we don't like any of them is simply come back up here and change it back to a basic running stitch or a basic satin, which would be your zigzag. Underneath the fills, your satin stitch is going to be what your kind of default is for the most part. A fill stitch would be what you would want to choose so that instead of having the big jumps of satin stitches across these, you would have a fill. So it would stitch multiple times across and then going back, so on and so forth. If your letters are too large, you are going to want to go into that fill stitch because a satin stitch, those big stitches like to get caught on things and then rip out, which we of course don't want. So those are going to be your main. The program fill is pretty cool. Um, again, we have the ability to adjust what type so how do you want that to look? Your basket weave and things are a really neat look. If we're doing um, something that's got a um, kind of a C look to it, we can of course use those lovely scales. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you guys can see. And you can see now when we get closer that that is actually doing a fill stitch with a pattern in it. One more time, I'm going to go back to that realistic view, and you can see that it actually does that fill with the pattern built into the design. And you can change that pattern very easily and, of course, change the size. So again, that was under Program Fill Stitch right here. Your satin stitch is going to be kind of the default, if you will, and then your fill stitch will be literally multiple stitches across each piece. I'm going to change my view back. So those are some of the basics of your texts. I hope that helps you manipulate um, what you would like things to do for you much easier. Um, and it's a lot of fun to add multiple different things. And it is a lot of fun to add uh, different types of texts by downloading. Um, this particular one was in a Disney pack that I purchased of fonts. Um, however, there are many, many free fonts available Defont, which is Diaz and Dog, A F O N T dot com, has a whole bunch, uh, but you can just Google um, and have a lot of fun with that. I hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see you next time.